Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live, and welcome to the Nurburgring. We've been here before. Last time we were here, we were on the Nordschleife. This time we're racing on the Grand Prix circuit. So what's going to be in store in the free races today? Well, hello, everybody. Adam Bath here with uh, Sam Kumo on the cameras. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing what is going to happen here at the Nordschleife. It's been a pretty interesting season so far. Uh, we're really on the home stretch now, we're on our way uh, towards the end and uh, yeah, it's been a very, very eventful season. Uh, we started out at Spa just before Christmas, uh, then I believe we might have had a race on Christmas Day, but uh, then we started the new year uh, racing around Monza, high speeds of uh, that circuit of course, then we went to Watkins Glen uh, before heading to uh, the Nordschleife where we were uh, on the 8th of January, then uh, Road Atlanta, Mount Panorama and then uh, Brands Hatch GP last week before we're here today at the Neverwinter Grand Prix circuit. circuit. So good variety of circuits on this uh, series so far. And then, uh, yeah, next week we're at Suzuka East for ending the season at Road America and Le Mans. And who's going to come out on top in the championship there? Stelian Shapovalovsky was the uh, champion, reigning champion going into this uh, season. And he is yet to set a time in qualifying. Currently on pole position is Rob Hartley. Does very well in the uh, the Rick Matek Sports Car Series, which we show on um, on us on Monday nights on Apex Racing TV. Uh, usually about 2 a.m. in the morning, and uh, yeah, doing so here, uh, doing well here too. On currently on pole position, we're on the Grand Prix layout, uh, which means the chicane at the end of the uh, back straight, just before the Coca-Cola curve at the end of the lap, uh, should provide an overtaking spot for these guys. And uh, yeah, we'll watch with interest to see what happens and whereabouts the overtaking spots on the circuit are. I'll just quickly try and find the championship standings because uh, the ones that we have handed to us are a bit out of date. So I'll just see if I can uh, find those for you. Um, well, for my information, Stalin Chapelevsky leads the way in the championship. Steve Hefford second, Ash Beard is in third. Uh, Chapelevsky leading the points by about uh, 60 or so. Uh, Ash Beard in third, Rob Hartley fourth, uh, only ten points behind him. Uh, then Jamie Ayres fifth, Roy Verke sixth, seventh, Floor Murray eighth, Andy Shield ninth, Brian Holmes in tenth. Uh, Max Wright, Stelian Chapelowski, three wins to his name this season. Uh, Steve Hefford with the one. Uh, in terms of wins, uh, Rob Hartley's got two, he's in fourth. Andy Shield, Brian Holmes also with a win. Uh, three wins for Dan Hunt, but he's only sitting twelfth in the standings. Uh, Lawrence and also with one and Steve Walker with one there, 18th and 19th. This uh, this is uh, the reason for those wins uh, for the drivers that are so far down in the championship, of course, is because of the look of the draw that you get with the reverse grid. And as always, we'll have that twice in race two and uh, race three. So uh, that'll be definitely one to watch as well. Always see drivers working their way through the field in um, in the reverse grid races, especially, especially in the Mazda MX-5. Uh, we were doing the BSRTC Winter Series on a uh, Thursday night and uh, the likes of Stelian Shapovalovsky and uh, Dan Hunt uh, and uh, Wojciech Zavidovic as well who was racing on Thursday uh, they were definitely working their way through the field very quickly so uh, yeah first grids you cannot rule the fast guys out qualifying though for race one we'll definitely see the fast guys there and uh, yeah Rob Hartley on provisional pole position second Matt Webb third Alex Lawrence and fourth Pete Newman 5th Ash Beard, 6th Diogo Melro, 7th Brian Holmes, 8th Trees Nice, 9th Nikolai Silvest, Lon Marie in 10th. We'll just see if anyone's on a lap. Alan Mitchell going through the final corner. Currently in 24th place. Personal best for him is 226.401. Comes across the line and does a 224.968. Moves him from 24th to. Uh, doesn't, doesn't move him up the order. Uh, so, I don't know what's happened there. Alan Mitchell, he has, he has registered a time, but. Um, he hasn't, hasn't moved him up the field. See if anyone else is on a quick lap. Uh, Simon Roden going into the final corner now. Now 46. Nowhere on the grid. But this will be uh, his one and only flying lap. Comes across the line and does a... Another invalidated lap. So Simon Roden will be starting at the back of the grid. Stelian Chevalesky also starting at the back. It's likely due to a penalty that he's had, that he's had carried over from a previous race meeting. But as we were saying last night, uh, if you don't set a time in the qualifying session, uh, and there's a few of you, 
uh, for, uh, haven't set a time in the qualifying session, uh, mainly due to back of the grids or something like that, then uh, the iRacing service orders you based on your i rating. Uh, so highest i rating will be starting in uh, 26th place, which is the first car that hasn't set a time, and then um, yeah, the car with the lowest i rating will be starting at the very back, which um, is a contest between Lee Barmer and Lewis Bibby. Uh, Barmer on 826 his i rating, and uh, Lewis Bibby on 848. Uh, Selin Chapelewski will probably be starting in um, 26th place, yeah, because he has definitely got the highest I rating out of the cars that are starting uh, at the back of the grid with no time. Let's run you through the grid then for the opening race of the day. Rob Hartley on pole position, Matt Webb second, Alex Lawrence in third, Pete Newman fourth, Ash Beard fifth, sixth Diogo Melro, seventh Brian Holmes, eighth Dries Nice, Nikolai Sylvester in ninth, and Lorne Murray in tenth, eleventh Max Wright, twelfth Jamie Ayres, thirteenth Matthew Kieber, Rob Graham fourteenth, Lee Deemer fifteenth. 16th Jim Flanagan, 17th Colin Robinson, 18th Simon Landemore, 19th Ewan Tyndall, 20th Mario Girard, Laura Bonds 21st, 22nd Steve Richardson, Nick McCarran 23rd, Alan Mitchell 24th, Kevin Woods in 25th, and then the cars that didn't set a time in qualifying. Stelian Shapovalski 26th, 27th Stephen uh, Blokinger, uh, Steve Heffer 28th, Kip Stevens 29th, Roy Verke 30th, Michael Barry 31st, Simon Roden 32nd, Lewis Bibby 33rd, and Lee Barmer starting in 34th place. Interesting enough, I think it was Lee Barmer that started at the back of the grid last night in the club in the uh, the Kia Cup series. Uh, so possibly being a naughty boy of late, or maybe it's just the stewards that think he's a naughty boy. Uh, I think you'd probably think otherwise. That web versus Rob Hartley. Then um, I'll probably do a better myself um, <laughs> tonight. Uh, I think uh, Lawrenson might get the win here. So Rob Hartley, I have to say, has looked pretty good in the uh, the Rick Matek Sports Car Series that we have, we have been showing on uh, Monday nights on Apex Racing TV. So we'll see how he does here at the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit. 16 corners, 5.15 kilometres, ambient temperature 21 degrees, track temperature 23 degrees Celsius. And of course, free... 15 minute races for the drivers today. The revs begin to rise and race one of the day here at the Nürburgring in the BSR Mazda MX-5 series is underway. Good start by the car that started third, Lauritsen, so I wasn't completely insane saying that he might have a chance of winning this, but will he take second place going into the first corner? That is the question. Um, Rob Hartley's got a fantastic start and leads. Second is Matt Webb, around the outside goes Lauritsen, that will quickly become the inside for turn two in this arena section. Up the inside goes Lauritsen, and he takes second place away from Rob Hartley, so there you go, second row of the grid start for Lauritsen, he's already up to second place. Street's nice and Brian Holmes battling away, going into turn three, and also Pete Newman and Ash Beard. Beard up the inside, but Newman will go back up the inside. Promotes good racing here around this uh, around this arena section. And just behind them is Diogo Melro, who had a, a really good, had a pretty good evening last night in the BSR Kia Cup Series. Trying to replicate that here today. Brian Holmes also trying to get up the order. He's got trees nice in front of him, side by side in the background. Lorne Murray versus Jamie Ayres. Ayres up the inside. Now we're on our way to the Dunlop curve, and Ayres is off. Ayres is off into the tire wall and he is going to have to reverse and make sure he doesn't get involved in any of the shenanigans that is going on uh, in on the track. He doesn't collect anyone and he gets going now in what is 31st position, stone dead last. On to Jamie Ayres then, now into the Schumacher rest for the first time then. Alex Lauritsen getting chased by Matthew Webb. Matt, Matt Webb will want that second place back after losing it in the arena section. Already ducking to the outside to try and get the position going into this fast sweeping section of corners. Good defensive driving there from Lauritsen. Make sure that Matt Webb cannot turn in on him. And Matt Webb has to settle for that third place for now. Selin Chapelevsky, man on the move. He's just got past Lee Dima. Uh, to move into 13th place and up 13 positions. Stanley Chapelevsky started at the back of course after penalties picked up from previous race meetings and the championship leader wasting no time uh, to get up to 13th place. Here's a bit of a gap though to the next car on his list which is a uh, Max Wright. Gap between them is uh, one and a half seconds already going into the chicane at the end of the back straight. Low down penalty for car eight. Brian Holmes 
it can happen and if you have to pick a, a lap that you don't want it to happen it's the opening lap and uh, yeah you have to serve it and he has now had to drop down the order to uh, Brian Holmes now down in oh, way down down in uh, oof. I don't know if I know good. down in 13th place six positions lower than where he started first lap in the books then Rob Hartley leads Matt Webb by 2.1 seconds such a big gap already Max Wright also seems to be dropping down the order. Stelian Chapolevsky's just got by him into the first corner. Contact made, and around goes Max Wright, turned around there by uh, Alex Lauritsen. So what happened to Lauritsen? He was third at the start of the lap. And um, just trying to scroll back through my replays. It might have been a slowdown penalty. Yeah, it was a slowdown penalty for Alex Lauritsen. That's why he was down the order. And yeah, contact with uh, Max Wright, and Wright gets turned around, and he's now... Uh, he's now down in 31st position. Jamie yeah, is also back in the pits after his contacts on the opening lap uh, with the wall. Matt Webb in second then. Side by side for third though. Pete Newman versus Ash Beard. Beard has a little bit of a look going into the Dunlop curve but no way, nowhere through uh, for him just yet. Biding his time. Still got 11 minutes to go in this race. And uh, Diogo Mauri now fancies his chances going into the Schumacher S. This will be a brave manoeuvre. He can pull it off. And the outside he goes. He's been given the room by Ashbeard. Mauri back up the inside. Oh, close to contact. They do rub door handles there. Ashbeard and Diogo Mauro. Beard will ha surely hold the position. No, he won't because Mauro goes around the outside. Commitment there from Diogo Mauro. Races in the Kia Optima many times, of course. And has won the Club Series Championship twice. And Yoga Melro threw into uh, fourth place, up two positions. Good start from him. Two positions in the opening two laps. Where's Stelian Shepolevsky in all this? He's, um, uh, he is a uh, side by side with Alex Lauritsen. Lauritsen, who was uh, in second place a lap ago, now battling away with the championship leader, Stelian Shepolevsky, and Brian Holmes, who had to serve that slowdown penalty in the chicane a lap ago. Chepi up the inside into the chicane. That is 10th place for Stelian. Now he can try and fence, and now he can try and set himself up to get past uh, Rob Graham, going into the final corner. Into the Coca-Cola curve, setting up the inside, and that is a ninth place for him. Graham might won't give up though. He's going to try and hold it out round the outside down the front straight. Lawrenson will be able to pick up the toe off both of them, and we'll see if we can make it three wide going into the first corner. Is Lawrenson going to go through the middle? He is. He is. He gets out of it, or does he? He has another little look. And Graham should go around the outside into the first corner, into the hairpin. And now onto the arena section through turn two. And Lawrence will be inside of Chepilevsky now. So just when it looked like that Chepi was going to get past Rob Graham, that looks like he's about to get past by Lawrenson. Chepi hard on the brakes so. though. Lawrenson back up the inside. Through the final part of the arena section, Chepi Chepilevsky gets a good run on Rob Graham. 2 by 2 here. Cuts to the inside, Stelian Chapolevsky. Lauritsen might try and follow him through. Oh, Graham out of shape. Chapolevsky gets up the inside. Everyone scatters. Graham back up the inside, hits Chapolevsky. You can't do that in a Mazda. And he collects two cars. Lee Diemer and Jim Flanagan. Well, in the Kia Optima, Rob Graham, that would be uh, pretty normal. But he's Mazda MX-5's rear-wheel drive. Slightest tap to the rear, and you just can't save them. Not even Stelian Chapolevsky and Jim Flanagan. His bro steering's broken. He's out. Stelian Chapolevsky, uh, 25th place now. Has he picked up too much damage? Uh, he's just got back going again with a ton of damage to the front of the car. So that is a shame. Stelian Chapolevsky was working his way through the order, up 14 places before he had his crash. And uh, yeah, I wonder if a penalty will be getting handed out for the next race meeting. Battle for second, third and fourth is on. Diogo Melro wants more positions uh, going up towards the chicane. And in fourth place, Melro, a Iberian, trying to get past Pete Newman, the Briton. Matt Webber's also from uh, Great Britain as well in second place. Newman doesn't get the best run through the chicane there. And neither does Matt Webb, because he's got a slowdown penalty. Matt Webb having to serve a slowdown. Looks like Dries Nice has also got to serve a slowdown penalty. And that is uh, Matt Webb demoted to fifth place. And uh, Dries Nice down to... Oh, no, contact. What's happened with Dries Nice? Or has he just lost the car? Let's have a look at what happened. Oh, my word. Who's that? It's Nikolai Silvest. Well. 
you got to say that Dries Nice invited it because he was serving a slowdown, but then... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I... Believe it or not, I might say that I, I might partial more of the blame on, um... On a Dries Nice there, but, uh, yeah, Sylvester was already up the inside. I know, that's Dries Nice down the order now to 23rd place. Roy Verke also has visited the pits on this lap. Preston were driving then in the early going. Newman still trying to hold off Diogo Melro. Uh, with Ash Beard also behind. Um, Beard will be trying to join his teammates, Rob Hartley at the front. I believe those are Team Mad drivers. Uh, but yeah, going uh, towards the Dunlop curve then. These three, Newman, Melro and Beard, all still nose to tail. And you've got to say, it might be uh, the case of a slowdown penalty that might settle uh, this battle in, in the closing stages of the race. We've still, got, uh, we've still got just over six minutes to go beside all this. Of course, this Mazda MX-5, all about the momentum. And if you just make a single mistake, then you're bound to lose a handful of positions because it is so close in this championship. You can see the drivers also have the liberties to ride the kerb in these Mazda MX-5s. Of course, if you're in a single-seater, like a... And the McLaren Formula 1 car, which we have on the iRacing service, you couldn't really do that without the car bottoming out and losing control. Melrose got a good run on the exit here. And might look up the inside going into the chicane. Up the inside he goes. Newman is late enough on the brakes, but Melro has the inside line and should have the position. Don't know if he'll serve a slowdown penalty because he did take a whole load of kerb on the inside, but I don't think he has. And uh, yeah, Melro threw into second place. Uh, for after all that, there's now five seconds behind Rob Hartley, the Californian, leading the way in the race at the moment and uh, is continuing to set fast lap times. Newman is going to fight back though. Melro doesn't have any slipstream anymore and Newman should have the chance going into the first corner. Things about it, but uh, Melro is late on the brakes again. Makes the first corner and uh, yeah, Newman has to settle for third place for now anyway. Matt Webber's joined the back of this train now too, after serving that slowdown penalty a few laps ago. Was in second place, of course. Now he's trying to get the position back. Lawrenson, Alexander Lawrenson getting past Brian Holmes going into the first corner. That is Lawrenson continuing his surge back through the field after he too picked up a slowdown penalty on the opening lap of the race. So damaging if you pick it up on the first lap. What it does uh, is it portions the time you need to give back based on uh, your optimal time. And because you do it on lap one, and because you got a slowdown penalty on lap one, the iRacing service doesn't really know how what time to give you. It just gives you a huge amount of time to give back. And uh, for Alex Lawrenson, he had to serve it. And yeah, he's now down four positions from where he started up to seventh place now. Brian Holmes down to eighth. He too had to pick up a slowdown penalty early on. Bill cannot take this, your eyes off this battle for second place. Through the Schumacher S they go. Melro, Newman, Beard and Webb. And Newman's got a good run on the exit of the Schumacher S. It looks like a relatively easy corner to get right, but um, yeah, you can easily get it wrong. And if you have a problem in that corner, it can be very, uh, very severe for you. Just ask Lewis Hamilton a good 10 years ago, where he had a, a big crash in qualifying where the car got a puncture. Of course, that race weekend famous for the uh, crazy weather that they had, and Marcus Winkelhock leading the way in his spiker. That web. Trying to go up the inside of, of, uh, Be of Beard going into the chicane. And he is through into a fourth place. Laura Bond is dropping down the order. What's happened to Laura? She's off just after the Schumacher S's. Was it on her own? Yes, it was. Very good avoidance there by Simon Landamore. And Laura Bond has got back going again, however, she is now in 18th place. That's still good territory for a reverse grid, though. So uh, she, can't be she can't be too disheartened about all that. Matt Webb wants to get past Pete Newman then into the first corner. With a two-minute lap, we've got about... Yeah, we're on the, to the penultimate lap of the race now. Into the arena section again. Matt Webb trying to go around the outside, and Newman's giving him the space. Oh, backing it in there, which you can do in these Mazda MX-5s. 
almost like a MotoGP driver. And now you can see that Newman's losing ground to Melro because he's got to worry about Matt Webb behind him. So now this could be interesting here. This through this fast section, this is where Fernando Alonso and Ma Ma Felipe Massa had their infamous battle in the same race I was talking about. Uh, the 2007 uh, German Grand Prix. All nose to tail again. The top uh, five separated by eight seconds. Of course, Hartley and Melrose seven seconds behind. And yeah, just a second covering this quartet here of, uh, of Melrose, Newman, Webb and Beard. And just behind all these... There's a, there's a trio battling away as well. We've got uh, Lorne Murray, Alex Lauritsen, and Brian Holmes. And this is another trait of racing in the Mazda MX-5. You do get these, these gaggle of cars forming. Everyone's so close. Up the inside of Lauritsen on Murray. Lauritsen through, and Brian Holmes might fancy his chances as well. Lorne Murray concedes the place. And there's Lorne Murray down to eighth, losing two positions in the space of two corners. Lauritsen through to sixth. Brian Holmes down is uh, also up into seventh place. And Lauritsen, you've really got to say that is as far forward as he's going to get uh, because he is <laughs> 10 seconds away from this battle of Ash Beard, Matt Webb, Pete Newman, and Diogo Melro. Well, partly crosses the line to start the final lap of the race. He has got a six, seven, make that seven second advantage over Diogo Melro. Now is Matt Webb's opportunity to try and take second place away. He's in the slipstream. Half map over Pete Newman. Newman moves over to defend. Matt Webb's going to sell him a dummy. Up the inside he goes. Hard on the brakes. And is he going to make the corner? He just about does. You can see the brake disc is glowing. Newman's not given up though. He's going to come back up the inside. Forces Matt Webb out wide. Matt Webb's now going to cut back to the inside. Possibly and try and get the move done into the final part of the arena section. Late on the brakes again. Trying his best to set up Pete Newman through this final section. And Newman, to be fair, has closed in on Melro. So it's anyone, it's all up for grabs in the battle for second. They've got some lap traffic in front of them in Lee Barmer. Wonder if they'll get to him for the end of the race. As Matt Webb looks up the inside again. No way through. Pete Newman carrying a whole load of speed into this fast section. And you can see he's desperate to try and get past Diogo Melro. Lap times last time around. All of them, pretty much, apart from Beard, who was quicker, did 220.5s. 220.56, 5.9, 5, 5.6 again for Webb, and 220.4 for Beard. As up the inside goes Matthew Webb on Pete Newman. That is third position, yes. Matt Webb threw into third, but then Newman comes back at him up into the Schumacher S. And I think, guys, if you continue this, you're going to have to kiss your chances of second place goodbye. Matt Webb threw into third. But four positions. Uh, that is Diogo Mar, actually. Matt Webb down to, is, is in third place. One position lower than where he started. Still trying to get these positions back after serving that slowdown penalty on the opening lap of the race. It's a good run on the exit, even though he puts two wheels into the gravel. And he might still have a chance of taking second place away from um, Diogo Melro. He's in the inside curb. Melro knows this, he cuts to the inside. Matt Webb going to the outside. If he can carry the speed around the outside, he might be in luck here. No, he isn't. And he might and he's off. Matt Webb spins the car, loses it. Meanwhile, Rob Hartley comes through the final corner and he's gonna take the win in the opening race of the day here at the Nürburgring. Second place is gonna go to Diogo Melro. Third. Who's it gonna be? Is it gonna be Beard? Is it gonna be Newman? Newman by uh, just a tenth of a second. Matt Webb will come across the line in the end. Finishes fifth and crashes, I think, to celebrate. Um, <laughs> sixth place for Lauritsen, seventh for Brian Holmes. So Lauritsen got past Holmes in the end. And uh, Law Murray finishing in eighth. And Rob Graham in ninth. And running up the top ten. Who's it going to be? Landamore or, um, or Hefford? Across the line they go. And the final spot goes uh, to Landamore by uh, 45 hundredths of a second. Close battle there. We got any more on our way to the line? Huge gaggle of cars come across the line there, including Alan Mitchell, Kevin Woods, Trees Nice.
Oh, we've still got a few cars to finish. Matthew Kieber, he's in 28th place. He's just going up to the Schumacher S's now. Why is it always Sunday nights where we've got... And why is it always the Nürburgring where we've got cars that are so far away from the finish line? Lee Diemer is on his way to the finish line. Roy Verke has just come across the line in 25th. Uh, Lee Diemer is just coming up to the chicane now. His uh, teammates do relatively well. I believe they're teammates anyway. Looks like he's got the same similar liveries to them. Rob Hartley, his teammate, won uh, the opening race, of course. And, uh, and Brian Holmes are finishing in 7th. And Ash Beard finishing in 4th place. He might be able to get another of their cars onto reverse grid pole here if he's, if he's lucky. Edema comes across the line and will take 26th place. Tim Flanagan, who was involved, unfortunately, in that, in, in that collision between Stanley Shepelevsky and, um, and uh, Rob Graham. Really unfortunate to him to get involved in, actually. He tried, to, he tried so much to avoid it, but he could really do nothing in the end. Finishes 27th. Kieber coming across the line then, 28th place. Interestingly enough, we had three cars that didn't take to the start. They probably had bans actually for those races. That it seems to be a new rule uh, for penalties. Uh, you can get banned for a race. And it looks like that Bloking, Jess Stevens and Bibby definitely had that penalty served up to them. Running through the finishing order then from the opening race of the day. Rob Hartley takes the win. Second for uh, Diogo Melro. Uh, just seeing how many wins that is for Rob Hartley. Now that's his third win of the season. Ties him level with Stelling Chapolevsky. Melro second, third for Pete Newman, fourth Ashbeard, fifth Matt Webb, sixth Alex Lauritsen. Both those two uh, could have been up in second place at one point if it wasn't for slowdown penalties. Seventh for Brian Holmes, eighth Lord Murray, ninth Rob Graham, and tenth for Simon Landemort. Steve Hefford finishing 11th uh, after starting in 28th place. That is a fantastic drive through the field there from Steve Hefford, gaining 16 spots. Second for, uh, 12th for Mario Girard, 13th for Nikolai Sylvest, Colin Robinson finishing 14th, Ewan Tyndall finishing in 15th. Saying Shepelevsky 26th to 16th, despite uh, getting turned around by Rob Graham. Uh, yeah, 17th for Laura Bond, 18th Steve Richardson, 19th for Alan Mitchell, as Rob Hartley does donuts in the pits, 20th for Kevin Woods, 21st for Dries Nyes, 22nd Nick McCarran, 23rd Max Wright, 24th Michael Barry, 25th Lee Deemer, 26th, uh, 25th Robert Verke, 26th for Lee Deemer, 27th for Jim Flanagan, 28th Matthew Kieber, Lee Deemer finishing one lap down in 29th, 30th for Simon Roden, so if we do get a full, he will be on pole position. 32nd, uh, 31st, uh, Jamie Ayres, two laps down, so he won't get any points. Stephen Blokinger, 32nd, didn't take the start, and neither did Kip Stevens and Lewis Bibby. Hi right then, reverse grid time for the second race of the day. And uh, yeah, we will get the Wheel of Fortune up. And uh, Sam Kuma will spin the wheel, man on the cameras, doing a brilliant job once again, and we'll find out who's going to be on pole position for the second race of the day. And it's a full. 30 cars will be reversed. Simon Roden's going to be starting on pole position. Uh, second uh, will be Lee Barmer, third Matthew Kieber, Jim Flanagan fourth, and uh, Lee Deemer starting in fifth. Uh, so uh, we will take a, a short break here on our Apex Racing TV and my racing live. But do make sure you join us after the break where we'll be on the grid for the second race of the day, round 25 of the BSR Hub Master MX5 series. We'll see you in a few moments.
iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT Series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car. Truex in the outside, contact made, 56 slides in NF4, who's oh, going to be a destroyed? Did he even give it to Ryan Truex? Truex is your winner over Tandy.
Welcome back to Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live. Getting set for the second race of the day in the BSR Mazda MX-5 Cup Series. Super Sunday here on Apex Racing TV. Super Bowl Sunday as well later on tonight. Having a party later on, I don't know, but um, yeah. Why not kickstart the evening by watching some Mazda MX-5 action. Good start to the day for Rob Hartley. Taking the win in race one in a very commanding circumstances. Was reverse good for race two, and it is a full as well. Too many cars on the grid today, so uh, we'll see what happens in this race in terms of how many positions these guys can get back through the field. Saw how good Stedding Chap at left he was um, before, of course, that contact with Rob Graham. Uh, working his way through the field. He was already up 14 positions by the time that contact happened. Um, he's still able to gain a good 10 spots at the end after coming back through the field, so we'll see what he can do uh, this time. Of course, uh, afternoon conditions here for the second race. Ambient temperature 21 degrees, track temperature 28. So, yeah, 15 degrees. One question I always forget to ask Alex Simpson is whether um, is whether there is a is there an actual tyre wear in uh, the Mazda MX-5. Uh, maybe if um, if any of the drivers are listening, you could post in the uh, YouTube chat. But for a 15-minute race, 28 degrees, uh, could tyre wear really be a factor for uh, for these guys? I'd like to know. Um, and if it is, is it? Really, a fact is it really a thing that the drivers will be uh, concerned about in uh, these these quick 15 minute races? This is that we had a uh, picture in picture during um, during the uh, commercial break. You'll have been able to have seen the action that's going on in the uh, Club 73 Touring Car Championship uh, in association with World League Sim Racing. Takes the slot of the of uh, the uh, the club series that was on on Sunday night, and uh, they're racing at Summit Point today, the Kia Optimum VW Jetta Championship. Mr. Alex Simpson and Mr. Woodhouse on uh, on the other side. Good choice of viewing, for you guys tonight. Not too long to go for the end of the warm-up session. Uh, just under 40 seconds left on the clock for that. And uh, then we'll be getting down to the grid for the start of uh, the second race of the evening where Simon Roden will be on pole position there. Well, if memory serves me correctly, I believe he was on pole position for the opening race of the season at Spa but didn't win. And I believe he hasn't won a single race all season so I'd like to get a win on the board there. Have unfortunately for him at Apex Racing TV, uh, for some reason we seem to have an issue with cars on pole position winning. Especially ones from reverse grids. Uh, Formula Renault, we're, uh, we're 12 races into the season now. Uh, not a single person has won from pole position. Um, not even Martin Van Lusenord. So uh, that'll definitely be another thing to watch for when uh, the Formula Renault heads uh, to the next race meeting on Tuesday night. For that, we've still got the second and third races of the BSR Mazda MX-5 Cup to do. So when you through the starting grid, pole position goes to Simon Roden. Second to uh, Lee Barmer, Matthew Kieber third, fourth Jim Flanagan, fifth for Lee Diemer, sixth uh, Roy Viverke, seventh Michael Barry, eighth Max Wright, ninth Nick McCarran, and tenth Dries Nice. Kevin Woods starting in eleventh, Alan Mitchell twelfth, Steve Richardson thirteenth, Royal Bond fourteenth, Stelian Chapolevsky in fifteenth, Ewan Tyndall starting in sixteenth, seventeenth Nikolai Silvest, Mario Girard eighteenth, nineteenth Steve Hefford, and, uh, and ninth Mario Girard and twentieth Steve Hefford. 21st Simon Landamore, 22nd Rob Graham, 23rd Law Murray, 24th Brian Holmes, Alex Lawrence in 25th, 26th Matt Webb, 27th Ash Beard, 28th Pete Newman, 29th Diogo Melro, 30th Rob Hartley, and 31st Jamie Ayres. And now you can see our race one winner, Rob Hartley, starting second last. We'll be taking the win though. Long hold and we're away. Roden gets a good jump away from the line, a very good jump. It's now going to be over who's going to take second place going into the first corner. 
Oh no, contact made and off go Jim Flanagan and and um, and uh, Matthew Kiba. That was in a straight line and it actually then contact was made and Jim Flanagan, I bet, can't believe it. He was already involved in uh, the collision with Stanley Chapolesky in race one through no fault of his own and then Matthew Kiba hits him and they both go off. Goodness me, Lee Deemer's been able to benefit from this. He's already up to second place. Third is Lee Barmer. Fourth is Reverke, but he does have Dries Nice going around the outside of him. And there, it's guess who? Stelian Chepolevsky. He's up to fifth place. A gain of ten positions inside four corners. And he might make that 11. He's trying to get up the inside of Barmer going into the fast section here. Up the inside he goes. That is fourth place for him. Stelian Chepolevsky on the march already in that Apex livery car. Uh, Alex Lauritsen's gone. Uh, what's happened to him? Also off is uh, our race a one winner, Rob Hartley. Lauritsen, I fear, is... Oh, dear, the car's a wreck. Same for Law Murray, same for Matthew Webb. Oh, and Matt Webb just gets hit by a Oh, up the rear, Matthew. And, um, yeah, Diogo Mauro getting started from the pits. Maybe he believed something's going to happen. Deemer off! Deemer off in the Schumacher S. But Chris crosses the field. Doesn't collect anyone, thank goodness. But what has happened here? Because Simon Roden who was in the lead, has lost it. Just looking back on the replay, it looked like Rosen was under pressure, got past for the lead, and then... and then quarter panels, yeah, quarter panels, Lee Deemer, and off goes Lee. Steve Richardson has to go back to the pit, so does Michael Barry, and who's leading the race now? It's Dries Nice, uh, who won uh, the Mazda X5 race on uh, Thursday night at Brands Hatch, race one because of a Wojciech Svidov and Ash Sutton crashing out on the final lap of the race. And yeah, he finds himself leading again here. Nine positions gained from him. Selling Chapolevsky, 13 positions gained. And Simon Roden looks like he could just make things worse. He might have got picked up a slowdown penalty, I can't tell, but uh, yeah, he was pulling over to the side of the track and now is under pressure from Roy Viverke going out the final corner. Viverke through past Roden. Uh, so it definitely looks like a slowdown penalty for uh, for Roden. Yeah, he's losing even more positions. Just it kills you, getting a slowdown penalty. Laura Bonds dropping down the order again. What's happened to Laura? Now oh, she's back in the pits. Uh, right, let's have a look. Going into the final corner. That was already all sorts of out of control, and she spins it on the exit and hits the wall and. And uh, I think if I did that, I'd head back to the pits as well. So, uh, Laura Bond back in the pits after a single lap. Elin Chapolesky then, what can he do about Dries? Nice. Let's see if Dries can put up a defence. He does well in the Mazda MX-5. So he uh, also races in the Rick Matek Sports Car Series, the same series that, uh, that Rob Hartley races in. Matthew Kieber's dropping down the order, and so is Colin Robinson, it looks like. What is uh, happening to those guys? Uh, I don't know what's happened, but... Um, yeah, they were, they were dropping down briefly. That looks like Kiva's got going again. Beard and Graham battling going into a Dunlop curve. Hartley up the inside of Beard as well. And that is a Hartley through into position. Graham's all over the place. Could be about to lose more positions. Car off in the background. That was, uh, that was Simon Landamore. The Schumacher S. Ash Beard in 11th place, gained 19. Ash Beard is actually now in um, in 8th place, again in 19 positions. Could be position gain number 20. Trying to look up the inside of Graham. Into the left hander. Rob Graham going around the outside using that curve on the exit. No way through. Max Wright versus Nikolai Silvest. Two cars in front of them. Silvest was involved with uh, contact with Dries Nice earlier on. And I think we might have to switch up to the battle for the lead as well. One tenth of a second between Stenin Chapolevsky and Dries Nice. Have it still side by side between Sylvest and, um, and Max Wright going into the chicane. Sylvest up the inside and Chapolevsky takes the lead. Dries Nice, did he have a slowdown penalty? Doesn't look like it. It looks like the car just got out of shape through the chicane and Chapolevsky took the lead. Dries Nice won't give up though. Pass along, we go to start lap. Three. Nice is looking back up the inside. Up the inside he goes. Dries Nice takes the lead back from Stelian Chapolevsky. This is what we want to see. This is what we want to see. A race between Dries Nice and Stelian Chapolevsky for the lead. 
I was fearing that Shapovalski would pull away. And Shapovalski now trying his best to get back past Drees Nice. Thanks to Gavin Wakefield, who's uh, got in touch on the chat, saying um, that there was some tie wear around this circuit. Only noticeable on the last few laps. So, um, yeah, we'll keep a watchful eye out for that. Uh, we've still got, of course, nine and a half minutes to go. We'll watch for the, in the closing stages of the race to see if any of the drivers suffer from tyre wear. In particular, maybe people like Dries Nice and Stelian Chapolevsky, who nearly runs into the back of Dries Nice going through the right-hander. Lee Barmer dropping down the order, um, and he's dropping down the order consistently. Uh, what's happened to Lee? Is he, picked, he must have picked up a slowdown penalty, I think. Must have been. Uh, but yeah, he's now dropping down the order. Simon Roden also dropping down. Uh, the order. Paul Sitter in more issues went off uh, through the fast S's section and uh, he's now down in uh, 19th place. Kepilevski and Nice continue to be separated by just under two tenths of a second through the final sector of the lap. This is where Kepilevski was able to get hold of the lead for a brief moment a lap ago. See what he can do this time. Dries Nice a good run on the exit. Three tenths of a second between them. Chapelowski has got to close that down and then try and find a way of overtaking him through this section of the circuit. Try and push Dries nice into a mistake or possibly even a slowdown penalty. Oh, so close to running into the back of him. With the chicane they go again. Dries nice gets a really bad run on the exit. And this is going to allow Sheppy up the inside into the final corner. I'll be trying to make sure that Dries nice doesn't get a good cutback on the exit. Look at the wide entry Dries takes. Stanley Chapolevsky can't really compete with that. And now Dries Nice is going for the lead again and might even be clear. That just shows you right there. Brilliant strategic play there by Dries Nice. Going right to the outside, cutting in, gets a fantastic exit. And it's enough to make him regain the lead from Stanley Chapolevsky. A man that knows how to race in these Mazda MX-5s right there. Ash Beard versus Nikolai Silvest going into the first corner. Silvest up the inside. A lot of damage to Nikolai Silvest's car. Uh, Sylvester back past Beard. Sylvester into fifth place. Ash Beard up 21 places, up to sixth place. Started in 27th. There you are, that our race winner, Rob Hartley, is also in 12th place, 18 laps down. Nice gaggle though forming here. Nick McKerran in, in his Lego car leading the way. Nikolai Sylvester right behind him, then you can see Ashford, uh, Rob Graham, Steve Hefford, and then Brian Holmes. Oh, Beard gets a good run on the exit. And and then Nikolai Sylvester knows that. He moves to the inside to brim off. Beard is going to try and get the move done on the outside. Is he going to try and cut to the inside? No, he can't because Sylvester is just going to come back up the inside and wrestle that fifth place away. McCarran is taking a very bizarre line. And uh, Ashbeard is going to get boxed in. No, he's going to make it three wide. No! And off goes Nick, Nick McCarran. The Lego car crashes again. And that's just opened a whole can of worms now because here comes Hefford. Here comes Brian Holmes. Here comes Sylvest on Beards too. Rob Graham also in the mix. And who's that joining the back of this train as well? Colin Robinson. Where's Ash Beard going? Taking a whole load of runoff area there. Maybe he's just trying to get out of this track as quickly as he can because poor Nick McCarran has got back going again. And he is down in 18th place. Lenny Chapolevsky out of all that carnage has taken the lead away from Dries Nice. Oh geez, we might not have seen that on the cameras. Uh, just going to see what happened there. Uh, looks like a good run for the Schumacher S by Stanley Chapolevsky and uh, that's what he did uh, to take the lead. What a fascinating battle this is uh, for best of the rest, four spot. Ashbeard now into fourth place, again of 23 positions. Brian Holmes up the inside of Steve Hefford into the final corner. And that is a Brian Holmes through into seventh place. Steve Hefford down to eighth. In the background, side by side between uh, between Rob Hartley and uh, Jamie Ayres. Hartley, of course, the race one winner, did it so commandingly as well. Up the inside of Jamie Ayres into the first corner. And he's through, I hear contacts. Oh dear, it's all kicked off in the first corner. Brian Holmes, what happened here? Up the inside of Sylvester, gets hit up the rear by uh, Steve Hefford.
Broken suspension, surely. I wouldn't, I'm not surprised by that at all. Broken right rear and probably broken left front as well. And that is Brian Holmes done for the day, or done for race two anyway. Such a shame really because it split up um, what was definitely a very intriguing battle for fourth place. We've just gone to five minutes to go then in the second race of the day. Nikolai Silvest will be trying, tr trying to get past Steve Hefford. Hefford sliding his way through and Silvest is going for it straight away. Contact made. Hefford gets forced out onto the gravel. Still not giving up. Going to come back on. Nearly quarter panel Silvest. Oh, he's, do he's in the mirrors, isn't he? A bit of road rage possibly from Steve Hefford saying, Oh, you, you can't get away with that. Silvest up the inside. Oh, and Hefford does a cutback on him and forces him out wide for good measure. There you go. There you go, Nikolai. And now here comes Rob Hartley to get into the mix as well. He's going to try and go around the outside of Nikolai Silvest going through the Schumacher S's. That is close. Oh, Nikolai Silvest had to get on the brakes to rescue the car from almost certain disaster. Silvest now down to eighth position. Could be worse. Here comes Colin Robinson. Not just yet. And now Jamie Ayres wants to get in the mix. Car 19. Up at the inside again goes Robinson. Oh, nearly close to turning in there, Jamie Ayres. Of course, all these drivers should have spotters. There's a side-by-side -side Hefford versus Hartley. Whether that's the iRacing spotter telling you whether there's a car on the inside, outside, whether you're free wide, whether you're clear, or you can uh, have one of your mates on iRacing, or one of your teammates telling you what's going on around you. There's been a big crash up ahead. There's a Hefford, all those sorts of all over the place there through the chicane, opening himself up to attack from Nikolai Silvest again. Silvest almost using parts of the pit lane to get by. Hefford says no to that again around the outside. Silvest will pick up the toe though down the front straight. Not too long to go in this race. Onto the penultimate lap we go. Unless Silvest throws it from a long way back, I don't think he's going to get Hefford this time. He goes from a long way back, but not close enough. The reason Ice has given Selin Chapelevsky a run for his money, I should add that. Um, he's lapped almost as quick as Chapelevsky, only, only half a second behind with two laps to go. But uh, I believe that Selin Chapelevsky should have this race in hand. Uh, we'll see if there's any uh, tyre drop off inside the final two laps. Uh, but it looks like the drivers still trying to their best to hold on. Steve Hefford though versus Nikolai Silvest. That's probably the battle that we're going to have all the way to the end. Also, don't rule out Rob Graham versus Rob Hartley, of course, because uh, Rob Hartley, the winner of race one, gains 24 positions, biggest mover through the field. He wants to make that 25. And Rob Graham might have to succumb to the pressure in the end. No way through just yet, going into the Dunlop curve, the hairpin. Now building up the speed again, up through the gears, the Schumacher S. Graham trying his best to hold on. Hartley's going to get a good run through the Schumacher S's, might be able to go to the inside. I didn't get a good run on the X actually, Rob Hartley. So uh, yeah, it looks like he's going to slot in behind again. Should have another lap after this to do to get, try and get the position. And of course he's got the run to the chicane here on this lap to try and get uh, fourth, uh, to get fifth place, sorry. A spot in the top five up for grabs. The DRS markers there. Um, Formula One venue, of course, hasn't been hasn't been a Formula One venue since um, uh, since about 20, oof, 2013. Oh, I wish we can see it back. Hopefully, with this new takeover in Formula One, we can see uh, this uh, this Nurburgring circuit back on the calendar. Onto the final lap we go. Only three tenths of a second between saying Chapelovsky and Dries Nice. So we can't roll out a, a change in the lead. But uh, here comes Rob Hartley to try and take uh, Rob Graham on the final lap. Looks like he might even be clear by the time we get to the to uh, turn one. I'm on the brakes. Rob Hartley takes the position. What about Sylvest? Is he close enough this time? No, he's not. Uh, so it's going to have to be something special on this lap for... Uh, Nikolai Silvest to take uh, what is uh, seventh place away from Steve Hefford. And they catch Rob Graham on this final lap. What was Graham's lap last time around? 224.015. 222.3 for Stalin Chapelevsky. That is a difference of 1.7 seconds. 
And uh, Shevelevsky and uh, Hefford not too far behind. What's the gap? Uh, nine tenths of a second. So uh, Shevelevsky might fancy his chances here on the final lap. Knight of Silvest is still hound is still hounding him. I'll also tell you on the final lap, uh, Mario Girard and uh, Jim Flanagan are battling along with uh, Simon Rosen, our pulse hitter, and Diogo Melro. Uh, which is very close. Uh, but no way through in those guys just yet. Andrew's nice to do anything in this final sector. The gap's three tenths of a second. Maybe he's been able to look after his tyres since Stelian Shevelevsky got past. And he might fancy his chances possibly of taking the win here if he can get a good run off this section. Shevelevsky takes probably what you would call the racing line, but Andrew's nice trying everything in his power to make sure he gets a run onto this, stra onto this back straight towards the chicane on the final lap. With all that, though, I still think it won't be enough. Gap is coming down, but it's only going to get as far as three tenths of a second going into the final chicane. And Beers looks like he might take third place away from Rover Verke. Beard going for it into the final chicane. There's a gap up the inside, but Verke has the racing line and he should make the chicane. Meanwhile, Stelian Chapelevsky comes through the final corner. And he's going to take victory in race two. One last night of Philip Island in the Kia Cup wins tonight in the Mazda MX-5 series. Who's going to get the final spot on the podium? Dries nice finish second. Who's going to get third? It looks like it's just, just going to be Roy Verke ahead of Ashbeard in fourth. And then our race one winner, Rob Hartley, should get fifth place. And then sixth, once again, just as I was saying about Roy Verke, just in sixth will be Rob, Gra Rob Graham ahead of Steve Hefford seventh, Nikolai Silvest eighth, and Jamie Ayres ninth for Colin Robinson, rounding out the top ten. Jim Flanagan versus Diogo Melro going into the final corner versus Mario Girard as well. Girard trying to get the move done up the inside, but it looks like Jim Flanagan should just hold on. Flanagan cuts across, and Flanagan should take what is uh, the 13th place in the end. 14th, actually, because Diogo Melro got past him on the final lap, with uh, Girard and Rosen both behind. We've still got on their final lap then. Quite a few cars still. Um, Alan Mitchell with uh, smoke pluming from the back of his Mazda MX-5. Uh, believe it or not, he's car one, uh, which I believe uh, the numbers are based on iRacing. In fact, I lie. No, they're not. Alan Mitchell just has the number one for some reason. But uh, yeah, he has got no he has got uh, smoke pluming from the rear of his Mazda MX-5. He should finish in about 24th place, I reckon. But uh, yeah, Alan Landemore coming through the final corner. And uh, he's going to take the checkered flag there and finish in 20, uh, 21st place. 22nd for uh, Michael Barry. And now we just have to wait for Alan Mitchell to come through the final corner. Now, good thing these Master of Expires aren't pouring out oil. Otherwise it would make a pretty entertaining... Um, pretty entertaining... Uh, pull down that. Yeah, revving as well, 90 kilometers per hour through the final corner. And Alan Mitchell comes across the line and will finish in 23rd place. Last car on the lead lap, a good 2 minutes and 10 seconds behind the leaders. Hey, well, if we get full again, he'll be on the front row, so it's not all too bad if you finish in that position. Elin Chapolevsky, though, gain of 14 positions. He wins race two of the day. Second place for Dries Nice. Third for Roy Viverke. Ash Beard from uh, 27th to 4th. Biggest mover through the field is his teammate, Rob Hartley, who finishes in 5th. 30th to 5th, our race one winner. Rob Graham finishing in 6th. 7th for Steve Hefford. 8th for Nikolai Sylvest. 9th for Jamie Ayres. And running out of the top 10 is Colin Robinson. 11th for Max Wright. 12th. Or Matthew Kiva, 13th for Diogo Melro, 14th for Jim Flanagan, 15th for Mario Girard, 16th for our sitter Simon Roden, 17th for Lorne Murray, 18th for Lee Barmer, 19th for Lee Dima. The two leads once again finishing right with each other, and 20th for Steve Richardson. Simon Landemore starting in 21st, 22nd for uh, Michael Barry, 23rd Alan Mitchell as we saw coming across the line there, and the cars one lap down or more. Kevin Woods one lap down, two laps down Brian Holmes. Nick McCarron three laps down. Matthew Webb also three laps down in 27th. Ewan Tyndall not having a good race meeting. 28th, six laps down. Alex Lauritsen also not having a good race meeting. Six laps down there 
in uh, 29th place. Laura Bonds, oh, it's all gone horribly wrong for her, 7 laps down, 30th. And Pete Newman, 31st, 7 laps down. So, um, not a good race 2 after a good race 1. I'm to set the grid then for the final race of the day. Race 3, we're flying through them. Uh, it's only just gone quarter past 9. Uh, so, we'll, uh, let's get Sam Kuma on the Wheel of Fortune. And we'll find out who's going to be on pole position for the third and final race of the day here in the BSR Master MX5 series. Could it be a full again? 22. So uh, Michael Barry will get put onto pole position. Sorry, Alan. Um, you're going to be starting in 23rd. Sam and Landemort starting in second. Third, Steve Richardson. Fourth uh, is Lee Deemer. And Lee Barmer will be starting in fifth. Two brilliant races so far in the BSR Mazda MX-5 series. What will happen in race three? Well, you're going to have to join us after the break to find out.
iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT Series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car. Truex in the outside, contact made, 56 slides in at a four, who's oh. gonna be in a stripe? Dead even, give it to Ryan Truex. Truex is your winner over Tandy.
Welcome back to Apex Racing TV, welcome back to iRacing Live. We're getting set for the final race of the day here in the BSR Mazda MX-5 series. Two uh, pretty entertaining races so far. And we're just minutes away from the start of uh, race three. Of course, at the same time, you'll notice during the break that we, we have the uh, the Club 73 Touring Car Championship going on at some points. And just when we came back, you saw quite a big crash there. So uh, plenty of action to look forward to there if you want to look at that. Of course, I uh, can promise you there will be a good race in store here, so you might want to stick around. 15 minutes of Master MX-5 racing. Race 1 saw uh, the win for Rob Hartley. Pole position, ran away with it really. It's over 5 seconds ahead by the time the checkered flag came out. Race 2, uh, Rob Hartley had to start further down the field, but it was Stalin Chepilevsky that came out on top, battling away with Dries Nice during the race. And it was uh, the Bulgarian that came out on top in the end. Some big crashes along the way as well. Some pretty questionable driving as well. Some crashes in the middle of the straight. Uh, some of them coming up towards the Schumacher S's and some of them are a few meters away from the line. Um, there have not been uh, Kiba and uh, Flanagan that made contact uh, going into before we even made it to turn one. And uh, Flanagan have to spend the rest of that third, second race working his way back through the field. And uh, yeah, late afternoon conditions here. And then they're going 21 degrees ambient temperature, 23 degrees track temperature, so uh, slightly cooler, and that should mean that the drivers won't need to worry about tyre wear uh, so much in this third and final race. Uh, of course, I should remind you that uh, next week, uh, same time on Apex Racing TV and uh, iRacing Live, the uh, the British Sim Racers Formula uh, Master X5 Championship. We'll be heading to, as I try and look at the schedule quickly, uh, we'll be heading to Luca East. Now this is one I've been having, uh, I've been circled, had circled for a while because it's not the Grand Prix circuit, uh, which we raced at in the, uh, the Kia Cup series a few weeks ago, but it's just going to be the opening sector of the lap, uh, which the BSRTC did the very first season that me Andrew Woodhouse and Alex Simpson were commentating together and it provides some of the best racing we've ever seen on the channel really. Uh, fantastic battle between uh, Wojciech Savidovic, Ash Sutton and the likes over I think it was second place. Basically what the layout is, it's just the opening sector, the S's, and then uh, we go back onto the front straights. Those of you that uh, watched the World Touring Car Championship a few years ago when the series went to Suzuka there will have uh, seen that. And uh, yeah, that's what we're doing next week. And before heading to Road America and to Le Mans to end the season as Max Wright crashes off in the Schumacher S's. Of course, uh, Monday, Monday night, 2am slash Tuesday, is uh, the next installment of the Rickmatech Sports Car Series. Tuesday night, 8pm GMT, it is the Formula Renaults uh, at Laguna Seca, I think. And then, um, yeah, Thursday, BSRTC. And, uh, yeah. So then we're back again on Saturday with uh, V8 Supercars and uh, the BSR Kia Cup Series. Only for the grid then for the final time tonight. Rob Graham on pole position. Second, Max Wright. Third, Nikolai Sylvester. Fourth, Jamie Yaz. Fifth, Alan Mitchell. Sixth, Lee Diemer. Seventh, Nick McCarran. Eighth, Roy, Roy Viverke. Ninth, Colin Robinson. Tenth, Diogo Melro. Eleventh, Mario Girard. Twelfth, Brian Holmes. Thirteenth, Alex Lauritsen. Fourteenth, Steve Hefford. Fifteenth, Ash Beard. Sixteenth, Alex Malensky. Seventeenth, Erdries Nice. Eighteenth, Rob Hartley. 19th, Stadion Chapilevsky, 20th, Ewan Tyndall, 11th, Jim Flanagan, 12th, uh, Lorne Murray, Matthew Webb, 23rd, 24th, Kevin Woods, 25th, Matthew Kieber, 26th, Michael Barry, 27th, Simon Landemort, Simon Roden, 28th, and Lee Barmer starting in 29th place. Lee Barmer starting down there, most likely due to a back-of-the-grid penalty. Here we go. We're away. Good start from, uh, who was that? That's Mario Girard that's got a good jump away from the line. Who's going to have the lead into the first corner though? Rob Graham uh, definitely has the lead, but here comes Sylvester to the inside of Max Wright. Sylvester up into second position. Oh, I hear contacts. I hear contacts. Oh, it's all kicking off here. Uh, that is Lawrence, I believe, up and over. Oh, so it, will it ever go right for Alex Lawrence? Battle for the lead then, Sylvester up the inside of Graham. Is this Sylvester's opportunity to take the lead? Graham might try and get it back for the final section of the arena. 
Max Wright in third, fourth Jamie Ayres, fifth Alan Mitchell, sixth is Roy Viverke, seventh Nick McCarron, eighth Lee Deemer, ninth Colin Robinson, and tenth Diogo Melro. Uh, no, no big movers so far as of yet. No 13 positions gained like Stanley Chapelowski did in race two. He's already up seven positions, so he's up to 15th. Alan Mitchell about to come under pressure from Roy Viverke, who finished in third in um, in our in our race in race two. It's going to go up the inside of car one, Alan Mitchell, into the hairpin. Now we're three wide. McCarron versus car 26. That is, uh, that is Lee Dima. Also in the mix, Diogo Melro through the Schumacher S's. McCarron under pressure from car one again. All cars fanning out here. You can see Selin Chapelowski also in the mix. Oh, I thought that I thought McCarron almost got pushed there by Lee Dima going into uh, that fast left-hander. And now onto the back straight for the first time. Diego Mauro in the slipstream of uh, Lee Dima. Up to, the, up to the chicane. Battle for the lead though. Sylvester versus Graham. Into the chicane. Who's going to have it? Is it going to be Graham? Sylvester lace on the brakes. He takes the lead back. Will he try and will he make it though through the chicane? Yes, he does. Graham having to uh, wrestle with the car just a little bit. And you can see Jamie Ayres getting up the inside and Max Wright going into the final corner. Marble's getting kicked up as well. Oh, Jamie Ayres hitting the tyre barrier, I think. It separates the track from the pits. Going through the final corner. Able to carry on, though. First lap in the books then, Sylvester leads by two tenths of a second, but he's already having to go on a defensive because Graham is trying to have a look into the first corner. Oh, Max Wright hits Graham and Graham has to half spins it. That's not what he wanted at all. Max Wright takes second place away. Jamie Ayres in third, fourth for Verke. And now Rob Graham's in the battle between Nick McCarron and Diogo Melro. Shane ready for Graham. Uh, hits Selin Chapelevsky in race one though. And you could say that might be uh, just as finally being done. Chapelevsky, speaking of which, is just getting past Lee Dima. That's Chappie up into eighth place. And Jamie Ayres has got past Max Wright, so it's now Ayres in second place. And Sylvester's a 1.3 second lead. Alan Mitchell, I've just seen on the cameras, has been off on this lap as well. He's down to 23rd place. Car one. Hugo Mauer getting past McCarron. And Shepelewski's in the mix as well. He's trying to find a gap. And Shepelewski past McCarron at least. There's two... Apex colleagues, well, former Apex colleague, I think Nick McCarron. I don't know if he's racing with the team this year in the BSR TC Pro Series, which will be starting in a month or so's time. And McCarron, of course, had a crash just in that part of the course, which we've just been through in race two. See if Jake, what Jamie Ayres has got for Nikolai Sylvest. Uh, when we come around to complete lap two. Uh, about seven laps of competition. Uh, inside the 15 minutes. See what Stelian Chapelewski can do about Diogo Melro. Teammates in the BSR World Series. Now they are uh, racing against each other. Rob Hartley dropping down the order. What's happened to our race one winner? Damage to the front. Uh, looks like it's just a slowdown penalty for Rob Hartley. I was saying that. Oh, looks definitely a bit wounded. Bob Graham dropping down the order some more. Most likely a slowdown penalty. Yes, it is. So uh, what started off as an opportunity to get a win turned out to a bit of a day to forget for uh, Rob Graham. Steady Chapelewski versus Diogo Mario down the front straight. Mario moving across. They're moving back to the racing line. Steady Chapelewski going to look at the inside into turn one. Looks like he should have the position and should have that fifth place. Up the inside he goes. Contacts. I hear contact, but I don't know who it is. But uh, Nick McCarron going wide, almost hits, collects Steve Hefford on uh, the rejoin. And uh, Nick McCarron, has he got damage to the car? Uh, does it, has it got broken steering? I don't know, but yeah. Max Wright versus Viverke. And now Viverke versus Stelian Chapelewski. Chapelewski trying to get alongside and he's through. That's Chappie up to fourth place. Could it be third for Stelian Chapelewski? Max Wright has a little look at the inside going into the S's. 
and now Stellion wants to get past Roy Viverke, who finds himself back in third place again. I'll tell you what, I don't know who did this reverse grid, but Viverke finished in third in race two, and it says he's only up five positions. Hefford dropping down the order. What's happened to Steve Hefford? He's off in uh, the S's, that's what. Looks like he got hit, but who by? Ah, oh, contact with Matt Webb. And gets hit for good measure by Alex Smolensky, who's been pretty quiet today. And uh, Melro versus Wright. Uh, Sadie Shepard looks like he's in issues. I think that damage that uh, he got in the contact um, will not have served him too well. And uh, Stalin Shapovalski up into third place now. Gap between Sylvester and Ayres is now six tenths of a second. Uh, make that, yeah, six tenths of a second. So we'll see what they can do over the coming laps. We're about to approach the halfway mark in the race, though. Baverke versus Melro. Down the straight towards the chicane. And Melro has taken fourth place away, unless Baverke can throw it up the inside, which I don't think he's prepared to do. No, he isn't. And uh, yeah, Viverke now down to fifth place. And uh, Diogo Melro now into fourth. Here what lap times are like when we come across the line to complete lap three. Across the line goes uh, Sylvester. He does a 2 minute 21 0. Uh, the time done by second place man Jamie has 2.21 0 as well. Only slightly faster by a few hundredths of a second. Fastest lap of the race by Stanley Chepalevsky. Other side down the front strip between Dries Nice and Lee Dima. Looks like uh, Nice has got the eighth position. And he has. Graham versus Robinson. Graham up the inside. A couple of laps ago, he was fighting for the lead. Robinson might try and fancy his chances back up the inside, but uh, Graham nearly through, and he's now in uh, back inside the top ten after starting in um, pole position. Seven minutes to go. Ian Chapelowski takes second place away from Jamie Ayres. Ayres will fight back. Up the inside, into the left-hander of the S's. Chappie around the outside. Ayres still not giving in. Now Melrose up the inside. Close here. Chapelowski doesn't get the best run either. Now he's going to have to be on the defensive in case Jamie Ayres fancies his chances. But Chapelowski now through into second place. Last time around he lapsed just over a second quicker than uh, Nikolai Silvest. He continues that run of form, uh, then uh, surely he'll be with Silvest by the end of the race. Still six and a half minutes to go here. Uh, he's still got to fend off the attacks from uh, Jamie Ayres and Diogo Melro behind. Silvest has a little look. Sorry, Jamie Ayres uh, has a little bit of a look there. Chapelowski has to take a bit of a excursion wide and having to defeat defensive lines here comes Diogo Moro though putting two wheels in the gravel there's still a Mazda MX-5 space there Jamie Ayres moves across to give him even, even more room and Diogo Moro should go up the inside going into the left-hander at the, at the end of the chicane at the end of the straight I should say into the chicane up the inside he goes and yeah that is third place for Diogo Melro. Slow down penalty, is it for Jamie Ayres, or is he just taking the inside line? It's hard to tell. I think it is a slow down penalty, yeah. Very punishing, this chicane here in the Grand Prix layout. Eye racing definitely does uh, really punish you if you take uh, too much of that inside curb. Max Wright versus Jamie Ayres, and Max, uh, sorry, Matt Webb versus uh, Jamie Ayres, and also uh, Max Wright down the front straight. Webb trying to take what is fifth place away from Max Wright. Up the inside, he goes into the first corner. And that is Webb through now for Verke versus Melro. Melro's off. Yoko Melro gone. And looks like he lost it on his own into the first corner. Car oh, got really unstable because of the line he took. Light tap with the wall, harmless really. And he's now got going again in uh, eighth place, just getting past Lee Dima after rejoining there. And a bit of contact as well uh, for good measure. Benny Chapelevsky wasted no time at all, has he? Four tenths of a second now between himself and Nikolai Sylvest. 2.21.477 for uh, Sylvest. And Benny Chapelevsky nine tenths of a second quicker last time around with a 2.20.527. Sylvest moving across. I expect him to put up quite a defence for this one. Hasn't got too many more laps to hold him off. Three laps, including the one we're on. 
Three laps doesn't seem like much, but three laps in these cars around this 5.15 kilometer circuit is going to feel like an eternity. Bye bye, for the lead then. Kapilevsky around the outside of the Schumacher S's. What can Sylvester do to stop him? Not much, really. They're still side by side, but I think Chepi's clear. Sylvester still forcing the issue. Is he going to be late on the brakes? He is. Go on, Nikolai. Go for the win. <laughs> and he's back up the inside and through. I mean, we're not, we're not biased here on Apex Racing TV at all. We've got an Apex UK car battling for the lead here. But Sylvester really giving Steady and Chapilevsky a run for his money. And I feel like um, Chepi might just have it now. Oh, going for it. Dummy move there by Nikolai Sylvester up the inside. And he takes the lead back. Haven't seen anyone do this to Stanley Chapanovsky in ages. Nikolai Sylvester back to the race lead. Only got to hold on for two more laps now, Nikolai. Stanley Chapanovsky second, Matt Webb third. Roy Viverke is in fourth. Max Wright fifth. Jamie Ayres still in the mix there in sixth. Seventh. Is a Dries Nice, eighth is a Diogo Melro, ninth Lee Dima, rounding up the top ten, Rob Graham. Lead again. Sylvester right up against the wall. Shades of Senna v Prost in 88. Uh, Esther Hill. Hard on the brakes they go. Sayan Chapilevsky round the outside. Trying everything he can and everything he knows to try and get past Nikolai Sylvester here. An ultimate lap. Oh, Sylvester just hogging the inside line on the inside. Just... That is, that is it really, he knows that Stelling Chapelewski will have to work twice as hard to get the lead if he covers that inside line. Although sometimes he can definitely be at a disadvantage if you just keep that inside line, but... Wow, Nikolai Sylvester doing a fantastic job so far. Stelling Chapelewski is strong through the second half of the lap though, and Sylvester will be making sure that he can try and get Matt Webb into the equation, and that's what he's doing. Matt Webb has now arrived on the scene, up 20 positions Matt Webb. Sylvester blinking in and out a little bit. That web started in uh, in 23rd place. Oh, going for second. Contact made. Chepalevsky has to get out, get out of it. And up the inside goes Matt Webb. Matt Webb, courteous really, I think, giving the position back in case anything happens. And he might even pick up a little bit of damage to the car. Can't tell because Matt Webb now dropping a little bit back now from Stenny Chepalevsky. Uh, we've lost Ewan Tindall on this lap. I don't know what's happened to him, but Chepalevsky versus Sylvester for the lead. One and a half laps to go. Sylvester covering the inside line. Chepalevsky moving to the outside. You could call, you could say that is, that is blocking there by Sylvester, nearly forcing Chepalevsky onto the grass. Now onto the back straight. Chepalevsky will pick up the slipstream this time. Which way is Sylvester going to go? Is he going to cover the inside or is he going to cover the outside? Chepalevsky up the inside though through the right-hander, but Sylvester will cover the inside line for the chicane. Chepalevsky moves across this time, making sure that he can't... But oh, Sylvester nearly going for it again. Brilliant stuff. I mean, it looks like it might just be the end of the road for Nikolai Sylvester. Chepalevsky finally through. Unless he gets a good run off the final corner, Chepalevsky might be away with this. Now Matt Webb trying to go around the outside of Nikolai Sylvester as we start the final lap. Sylvester forcing it wide. More contacts. Sylvester definitely a man that doesn't want to give up. And the Scandinavian. Making a good name for himself here, but it looks like Matt Webb has taken the second place away. And, yeah, Matt Webb through into second place. Nikolai Sylvester down to third as we start the final lap of the race. Half a second between Stanley Chepalevsky and Matt Webb now. Can Matt Webb take the victory? It's up to him now. Sylvester throwing it back up the inside of Matt Webb. Brilliant. Top 10 there, so we start the final lap. It's still relatively close behind uh, this trio. Uh, we've got Viverke, Max Wright, uh, Dries Nice, and Diogo Mero all relatively close together. Then it's uh, all, anyone's guess who's going to get as a... Where's Lee Diemer going? Lee Diemer looks like he's done for the day. He's just parked up. He was in about 8th place. Uh, also side by side, Brian Holmes versus, um, versus Colin Robinson. And Alex Malensky. These guys all going over spots just outside the top 10. Ash Beard, uh, sorry, Brian Holmes, uh, one of the last cars inside the top 10 as we start the final half a lap.
Max Rice having to go on the defensive here from uh, Dries Nice. This is over uh, fifth and sixth. Also, you can see that Diogo Mauro is in the mix as well. Three tenths of a second between Matt Webb and Stalin Chepalevsky. Could we see a final lunge up the inside to settle this race? Chepalevsky going for back-to-back back -back race wins. One race two and one race three. Through the right-hander and up towards the chicane. Matt Webb picking up the slipstream. Is he close enough? Chepalevsky covering the inside. Matt Webb going to the outside. Hard on the brakes to go. Matt Webb going around the outside. Is he going to make the chicane? Surely not. No, he won't. Nice try, Matt. And I think this might even put Sylvester into second, and that's Matt Webb disqualified. Then Chepalevsky will go into the final corner. Sylvester will take the second place back. It's going to be back-to-back -back wins here at the Nürburgring. Race two and race three go to Selin Chepalevsky. He comes across the line, takes a checkered flag. Fantastic job by Nikolai Sylvester. Brilliant battle with him and Chepalevsky. He takes second, and Roy Verke again, back-to-back -back podiums. Of course, the drivers might have something to say about this, of course, because I'm not entirely sure we had a reverse grid uh, for that one. Maybe a topsy-turvy reverse grid, but uh, yeah, Viverke back on the podium again. Max right fourth, Dries Nice getting fifth in the end. Uh, Diogo Mauer actually getting fifth in the end ahead of uh, Dries Nice. Rob Graham sixth, uh, seventh, sorry, eighth Ash Beard, ninth Brian Holmes in a tenth Colin Robinson. And a Matthew Keeper's just come across the line now, so only 17 cars. And more cars are coming across the line now. Alan Mitchell finishing in 18th place, Lee Barman 19th, and uh, Simon Roden comes across the line in 21st place. Top 21, but all, all the cars on the lead lap separated by 44 seconds. Well, I told you to stick it out, folks. That race three was absolutely brilliant. And um, yeah, it's running through the finishing order. Selin Chapolevsky takes the win then. Boy, he had to work for it on that occasion. Second, Nikolai Sylvest. Roy Verke finishing in third place. Fourth, Max Wright. Fifth, Diogo Melro. Sixth, for Dries Nice. Seventh, for Rob Graham. Eighth, Ash Beard. Ninth, Brian Holmes. And tenth, Colin Robinson. Eleventh, for Jim Flanagan. Twelfth, for Alex Malensky. Thirteenth, Mario Girard. Fourteenth, Rob Hartley. Fifteenth place for Kevin Woods. Lorne Murray, sixteenth. Seventeenth, Matthew Kieber. Eighteenth, for Alan Mitchell. Nineteenth, Lee Barmer and 20th Michael Barry. 21st for Simon Roden, the last car on the lead lap as Stelian Chapolevsky tries his best to do donuts. 22nd place for Matt Webb, one lap down. Getting disqualified in that final chicane, of course. Lee Deemer, also a lap down. Simon Landemore, also one lap down. Jamie Ayres, one lap down. Ewan Tyndall, two laps down in fit, 26th. Nick McCarran, 27th, three laps down. Steve Hefford, four laps down. And Alex Lauritsen finishing in 29th place, five laps down. drifting his way back to the pits. Alright, we'll quickly see if we've got anyone available for an interview. If you want to head over to the second stream, actually, yeah, I think we'll actually we'll bid our farewell so we can see the final few moments of the Club 73 series. So, uh, what a brilliant three races we've had today at the Nürburgring. Congratulations to our two winners in the three races, Selin Chepalevsky and Rob Hartley for the opening race victory. And we'll see you next week, 8 p.m. GMT at, oh, I'm looking again at the schedule, at Suzuka East. Make sure you don't miss that. But from all of us here, we're going to head over to join Alex Simpson and Andrew Woodhouse in the Club 73 Touring Car Championship. From all of us here, good night to you all.